นมัตถุรัตนตยศาสตร์ในไพไมโฮเมสุดาทริปเจนดบูดาตดามันสังค์ Dear devotees My name is Pramaha p a s a k o n p i o p a s o from the b u d d h a p a t i p a Temple, London, United Kingdom. This year, I was invited by t a n p r a m a Jamren k e m a v i r o the abbot of Wat p u t t a v i h a r a in Amsterdam. Whenever I have time, I always go. To give a sermon on v e s a n d a r a c h a t a k a at the Buddha Vihara Temple in p u m a r a n But this year, as everyone knows that the whole growth has been affected by the spread of COVID-19. Because of this reason, the Buddha Vihara, Amsterdam, needs to change the way to organize v e s a n t a r a sermon. The audience don't need to come to the temple; they can watch the broadcast live on Facebook, and so that you can. Be a part of the w e s a n t a r a c h a t a k a festival. For the benefit of those who do not understand Thai language, I just would like to summarize the w e s a n t a r a c h a t a k a tale in English. It's a part of the Buddhist tradition that before we begin the sermon. The monks will begin with saying Namo Dasa. So I will follow the tradition by saying Namo Dasa in Bali, and then I will give a talk or a sermon in English. <coughs> Namo Dasa Pakavato Arahato Samma Samputasa Namo Dasa. พระขวโตอะระหะโตสัมมาสัมพุทธัสสะTo say Namo Dasa in the central style or the Bangkok style, in the Sun region, the way to say Namo Dasa may be different. So again, I will say Namo Dasa in the the Sun style, so that you can see the difference between the different styles. <coughs> Namo Dan Sa.
Satsang. So this is what we call the Isan style, and the words are actually the same, only the style or the tone is different. And to give you the background of Vesantara Chartaka tale, I would like to bring you to the time when the Buddha was still alive, seven years after his enlightenment, and several times King Sadodana and the Buddha's father sent the envoy to invite the Buddha together with the last number of monks to visit Kapila Pasto. Um, with that success, uh, until the last time that the um, mission was led by uh, one minister, and his name was Udayi. So Udayi, after listening to the Buddha discourse, and he too became enlightened or attained arhantaship. And when he thought that now it was the good time or the proper time for the Buddha to visit Kapila Pastu, so Galu Dayi invited the Buddha to pay a visit to Kapila Pastu in order to have a chance to see his father, to see his wife, and also his only son Rahula. Upon the arrival of the Buddha and the last numbers of monks at Kapila Pastu, Many senior members of the royal family denied to pay respect to the Buddha because, because they thought that the Buddha was still young. So the senior members of royal families didn't even pay homage or pay respect to the Buddha. So because of this reason, the Buddha performed the twin miracle. After performing the twin miracle, and then the magic rain fall, or we call it the uh, celestial rain. Having seen this event, many monks wonder how come these magic rains happen. Having heard this, and then the Buddha came to the monk and said, Monks, not only this time that there was the magic rain fall. Even in the past, when I was born as Vesandara, there was the magic grain fall as well. Then the monks wanted to listen to the past life of the Buddha. So based on this reason, the Buddha gave a sermon on Vesandara, which is actually about the first birth of his life. So this is the background of Vesantara Chataka Tao. According to the Theravada tradition, the Vesantara Chataka Tao was recorded in the Tipitaka. And later on, the commentator expanded the story. In Thai tradition, the Vesantara Chataka is divided into 13 chapters. It begins with chapter 1. In Thai, we call it Tatsutosapon, or 10 blessings. And then the second chapter, Himawanta. Himawanta means the forest in the myth, or the mystical forest. And the third chapter, Dana, giving or charity. The fourth chapter, Wanapawe, or entrance into the jungle. And then chapter 5, Chujaka, the beggar or the Brahmin by the name Chujaka. Then chapter 6, Julapon. Julapon means the, the sparse forest, and the sparse forest. Then Mahapon, chapter 7 which means the thick forest. Chapter 8, Kumara, or the children. Chapter 9, Matri, which refers to Princess Matri, who was a Vesantara royal wife. And then chapter 10, Sakkaba. Sakka is the name of the inner god, who is the king of the Tavatimsa heaven. 
Then chapter 11, Maharat, the great royals. Chapter 12, um, chapter 12 is again the um, uh, Sakabab. The Sakabab, which means that the intra God's word. And last but not least, chapter 13, Nakara, return to the kingdom. So all of these 13 chapters were talked in different style in the northeast of Thailand. Monks are invited to perform the Vesandra Chataka in the singing style. In central Thailand, and they even have their own style. And like in Bangkok or in another part of um, Thailand, they also have their own style. So I would like to summarize the story of Vesandra Chataka in English. This may bring some benefits who would like to learn more about the Chataka tale. Vesandra, so I would like everyone to look at the word Vesandra first and how Vesandra was given to the prince. It happened when his mother, Queen Pusati, who was on her way because the queen liked to give the way um, to the charity, to the poor people. When she was on the street, she felt labor pain and gave birth to the prince who was known later as, later as Vesandra because she, he was born on the street. So this is the reason why that the prince was named Vesandra. So as I said before that the Vesandra Chataka tells in Thai tradition are divided into 13 chapters. Chapter 1 talks upon or 10 blessings. These chapters tell us about the 10 blessings which told to Pusti, who was then an angel and the um, chief consort of Intragod. After receiving 10 blessings, and then Pusti disenchanted to be born as a human being. After she was born as a human being, she was named again Pusati. One of her ten blessings said that she wanted to have the same name, Pusati. She would like to have a very beautiful eyes. She would like to have the power to free the prisoner from the prison. And after she was born, at the age of 16, then she got married to the Prince Sanjaya. So now she was married as, as a queen. So the um, chapter 1, 10 blessings, this is the summary. And then chapter 2, Himawanda. Himawanda is the first according to the Buddhist myth. Himawanda is like the forest. In this chapter, it tells us about the event when Prince Vesandara donated the elephant by the name of Bajayanaken. However, this caused anger among the citizens of Sibi. So, the people went to King Sanjaya in order to ask King Vesanjaya to expel, to strip Vesandra from his status. Um, in this chapter, Vesandara was a young king because his father, King Sanjaya, wanted to take a break. And then he gave the throne to his son, Prince Vesandara. So Vesandara was made as the, queen, as the king. And 
as he was always generous, so he liked to give away his possession. The highlight of this shabda is when where Sandra gave the elephant and by the name of Padayanake. In this shabda, we can learn that when the good person was born into this world, the good person may bring only peace and happiness to the community. In our community, in our society, or in our world, we need the people who sacrifice their happiness. We need to sacrifice for the happiness, for the benefits of the people. And of course, when we do something good, sometimes there is an obstacle. When we look at obstacle, we can regard an obstacle as the lesson, or at least it will give us more power or more inspiration in order to keep doing good deeds. Um, in chapter 2, the final purpose of sacrifice for Wei Sandra is in fact to achieve an enlightenment. Because after he achieved an enlightenment, and then he would be able to free all sentient beings from the bondage of Dukkha or the bondage of Samsara, the cycle of birth and death. So this is a summary of chapter 2, Himawanda. And then comes chapter 3, Dana or giving. This chapter tells us the event when Vesandara gave away the seven sets of gift or the great giving. After King Sanjaya asked Vesandara to go and exile. Before Vesandra set out of his journey, he requested King Sanjaya to give him at least seven days so that he could share his possession, he could give the material things to the poor, to the people who need his help. On Dove, where Sandra, at first, wanted to go alone, but his royal wife, Princess Mati, also insisted on accompanying, accompanying him because she said that, I have nothing to do if I stay in the palace. I would better go with you because we are now husband and wife, we choose go together. So, with Sandara, Princess Mati and the two children went on exile together. The morals from this chapter is that the love of mother and the affection of the wife. Um, we have some more from this chapter as well. At first, we may not understand why Queen Sanjaya asked Wei Sandra to go in exile because he knew that the citizens of CB were very angry, very upset in order to settle the dispute, in order to calm the mind of the people down. It would be best for Prince Vesandra to go in exile. Although King Sanjaya loved his son dearly, but for the benefits of the community, for the benefits of the citizens of CEP, he decided to demand Vesandra 
to go on exile. So this is the summary of uh, chapter 3. Then comes chapter 4, one not nowhere in time or entrance into the jungle. This chapter tell us the event when four people, namely where Sandara, Mati, Ganha, Charlie, set out on that journey to the mountain Wangkata. On their way, the four royals inquired with one king of Jaitara, where Sandra was invited by the king to take half of the kingdom to rule half of the kingdom, but where Sandra denied because he wanted to go on exile. However, the king of Jaitara appointed a hunter by the name of Jaitaputta to be like a security guard and um, hunter Jaitaputta was instructed by the king that don't allow anyone to disturb with Sandra and his family. When Vesandara and his family arrived at the mountain of Wangada, there were already two hermitage. One was for Vesandara and another one for Matri and the two children. These two hermitages were invented by one Devata, by one deity, on the command of Intragod for the Vesandara and his family to live in. And then Vesandara and his family made a vow to become hermits and spend many months there. In this Shabda, we can learn that whenever we are in trouble, for example, when we are broke, when we are sick, or even when we die, we can see who is our true friends. So the, two, the true friends we come to your help. Whenever you are broke, whenever you are sick, or when you die. Not only when you die, when your beloved one, or your, when your close family members die, the good friend will show their sympathy. To know if one is your good friend or true friend or not, because whenever you are in trouble, the good friend will also come to your side. We support you when you are tired. We lift you up when you are down. So the generosity of the good people will be known when we are in trouble. So this is the morals from uh, chapter 4, the entrance into the jungle. And now we're going to talk about chapter 5, Chu Jaga. So Chu Jaga is the name of one beggar. And who, he was a beggar. He lived his life by begging money or things from the people. In the region of Galinka, there was one beggar by the name of Chu Jaga. He stayed in the village called Tunnawita. He traveled everywhere in different towns in order to beg for money. He was able to collect 100 kahabana, probably about 1,000 euro. 
And then Chu Jiko was afraid that he might be robbed. So he took all the money and left them with his good friend. And then he disappeared for many months. His friend thought Chu Jiko might have died. At that time, the family has financial problems. So they spent all the money of Chu Jika. When Chu Jika re returned to ask for the money back, the friend was so shocked. So he didn't know what to do. And then he said, well, we spent up on your money. If you don't mind, take our daughter to be your wife. So Chu Jika was happy with that and then he uh, took Amitada, the daughter of his good friend, and made her as his wife. Amitada was a very good wife. She, she took good care of her husband very well, although and he was very old. She could she went to fetch water from the well. However, this brought her some problems. Because many women in that village didn't like it. Because when those women returned home, and then their husband said, Look at Amitada. She took good care of her own husband, but look at you now, you were very lazy. So, because of this, those women went to beat up. Amitada. And then when Amitada returned home, she cried and complained to Chu Jika, her husband, that I no longer want to stay with you because and when I'm here, whenever I go outside, those women tease me and beat me up. I better go to stay with my parents. But Chu Jika did not want to let his wife go. And he said, okay, what, I can, I, what can I do for you? And Amitada told Chu Jika that if you could find someone to be your slave, I will be staying with you. So Chu Jika was told by Amitada to ask the Vesandara children and to be their slave or servant. So this is the summary of uh, chapter 5, Chu Jika. The morals from this chapter is when we have money and before we lend money to someone else, we need to be very careful because that may bring you trouble or uh, lending money to good friend, this may lead to the, the end of your friendship. The good wife just look after the husband by taking good care of that husband. And next chapter 6, Julapun or the sparse forest. This chapter tell us the event when the beggar Chu Jika went on his journey to the mountain of Wangata. Then he met the hunter Jay Taputta, who was appointed by the king as a security guard. At first, Chu Jika was chased after by the dogs. Jay Taputta, the hunter, and most killed Chu Jika. But Chu Jika was very clever. So he had something like the chili, the dry chili in the bamboo. He showed that bamboo to the hunter. And that bamboo saved Chu Jika's life because Chu Jika said, inside this bamboo, it contained the letters from the king. So I am the envoy from the king. I was assigned by the king 
to send this message to Vaisandra. Jaita Buddha asked for forgiveness and then Chujika was look after. In this shop, we can learn that although you have power, you lack wisdom, you can be fooled easily. So, in our society, the fools can be easily a victim of the wise. Before we trust someone, Harm to investigate. And now we say when Maha Pon or the thick forest, Maha means great or thick, Pon forest. This chapter tells us the event when Chujika met a hermit, Ajuta. At first, Ajuta was suspicious. Ajita wasn't sure if Chujika really wanted to send a message to or they wanted to bother the, um, the Prince Vesandara by begging or asking his two children. However, Chujika was a very charismatic person, he could persuade Ajuta Hermit to believe in him. So, Ajuta the Hermit even explained the way to Vaisantara Hermitage. In this chapter, we can learn that Although you are very clever, but if you lack the investigation, perhaps you can become a victim. Although we have compassion, but before we show compassion to someone else, before we believe, we need to investigate it. And often when um, people come and ask for money, they always say that, oh, I'm broke, I want some help. And in fact, those beggars may have a lot of money in their bank account. So we need to be very careful. Make friends with someone, we need to make sure about the background or at least we can check the background so that we can put the trust on them. So this is the summary of chapter 7, Mahapon of the Thick Forest. And now chapter 8, Kumara or the children. So this chapter tell us the event when Vesandara gave away his two children, Ganna and Charlie, to the beggar Chujika. Before that day, during the night time, Prince Matri had a nightmare and she could foresee something bad will happen. So she went to see Vesandra and asked Vesandra to predict about the dream. Vesandra knew in his heart that someone would come to beg for the two children but he tried to comfort Princess Matri by saying that nothing to worry you had a nightmare because before you lived a very luxurious life but now we are living in the forest so it's quite difficult for you don't worry about the dream Although Mati was told by Vesandara not to worry about the dream, but 
she still had worries and anxiety. And after Matri left the hermitage, then Chu Shika came to ask for Ganha and Charlie from Wei Sundara. At first, Wei Sundara said, Wait until Matri returns. But Chu Shika argued that if we wait until Matri returns, and then Matri will stop you from giving the two children. Wei Sundara agreed with Chu Shika, so he decided to uh, give away his two children to Chu Shika. Um, in this chapter, we can learn that before we decide to do something, we need to consider the proper time. No need to rush. For example, if Chu Jika came to ask for, Ma, for Charlie and Ganha when Matri was there, and this would make things more difficult. So he waited until Matri left the Hermitess, then he came to ask for the two children from Vesantara. Um, again, in this chapter, we can learn that mindfulness can prevent us from all kinds of dangers. Whenever we are in critical situation, try to be mindful. When you have mindfulness, and then you will know what you need to do. So this is the summary of chapter 8, Gumara or the children. And now comes chapter 9, Matri or Princess Matri, and who was the royal wife of Vesandara. In this chapter, Matri, who was on seeking the fruit and root in order to feed Vesandara and, and her two children, on the way back to the hermitage, she happened to inquire with the white beast, who were in fact the angels in disguise because these angels did not want Princess Matri to come to the hermitage in time because this could be the obstacle for Vesandra to give the two children away. However, when Matri arrived at the hermitage, she couldn't see Charlie and Gantha. She went searching everywhere but couldn't find the two children. When she came to ask Vesandra, Vesandra even accused her for um, being adultery. Eventually, when, the, when Matri feigned where Sandra helped her, when uh, Matri was awake, where Sandra told her the truth. Having heard the truth, Instead of being angry, Matri rejoiced in the charity of Vesandra. Or she was happy that uh, Vesandra gave away the two children and as the mean to achieve an enlightenment. So this is the summary of uh, chapter 9. And we can learn from this chapter that the children are like uh, the the eyes or the hearts of parents, good child will bring happiness to the parents, and bad child will make the parents sad. Now comes chapter 10, Sakaba. Sakaba, which means that the inner God. In this chapter, after the two children were given away, Vesandra and Matri 
enjoy the life at the hermitage. The infant god was afraid that someone might come to ask Vaisandra for Matri. And then the infant god disguised himself as the own Brahmin and came to ask for Matri from Vaisandra. When Matri was given to the own Brahmin, who was in fact the intra god, and then the, the intra god returned to his original body as the intra god and said to Vaisandra that now you're not allowed to give away your wife because you already gave your wife to me, so I just would like you to keep uh, your wife with you. Um, in this chapter, we can learn that although when we do something good, although other person, other people don't know, but the goodness is still with you. Like the gold, although that gold is kept in the, in the cabinet, displayed, but the goal is still precious. So this means whenever we do something good, and though other people don't know about it, but the person should be proud of what they have done. Now comes chapter 11, Mahara or the Great Rules. So in this chapter, tell us the event when the two angels or two deities who disguise themselves as Swear Sandra and Matri and look after Ganha and Charlie and during that difficult time. At night, they disguise, they disguise themselves as Swear Sandra and Matri feed Ganha and Charlie for about 15 nights. And then during the daytime, they return hiding in their um, dimension, in their place. Chu Shiga, who took Charlie and Ganha with the intention to go back to his home, when he saw the junction, he wasn't sure which way to take. He decided to take the way which led him to Che Tu Dong, the town where King was a son to you, where Sandra father ruled. When Chu Jiga and the two children arrived at Che Tu Dong, the people recognized the two children and then they report this to King Sanjaya. Then King Sanjaya paid the ransom to Chu Jika so he could have Charlie and Ganha in his care. Um, after Charlie and Ganha were reunited with their grandparents in order to give a river to Chu Jika. Um, the king Sanchaya all the good food to feed Chu Jika, but because of his greed, Chu Jika ate too much, and because of that, he died. When the celebration was over, King Sanchaya had the idea to invite Vaisandra and Matri to come back to the town. The army was led by Prince Charlie, so all royal members, King Sanjaya, Queen Pusti, Prince Charlie and Princess Ganga were all the same 
to the mountain of Wangkata. But before the net where Santara and Matri, it was the end of chapter 11. In this chapter, we can learn that the good people will be supported whenever they have trouble. So they will be protected, they will be safe from all kinds of danger. And now chapter 12, Chakasa or Sikh Royals. So in this chapter, it tells us the event when the Sikh royal family members, King Sanjaya, Queen Pusati, Vesandara, Matri, Ganha and Charlie met each other because they were overwhelmed with gladness and happiness. They were they all fame. And because of that, the intro God inspired the magic rainfall. So the people woke up and this is the summary of chapter uh, 12, Chagasat or the Sikh Royals. In this chapter we can learn that combination and separations are common for all. We meet each other and one day we will depart. We can see the general city only when we are in trouble, when we are in a, in a difficult time. To forgive is the divine thing. Making a mistake is normal for human beings. Although you are very clever, but it's normal that you may make a mistake. Making a mistake is normal for all. So, to forgive is the best. Now comes the last chapter, chapter 13, Nakhon, or Return to the Kingdom. So this chapter tells us the event when the Sikh royal members led the army returning to the town. And then Vesandara was invited by his father King Sanjaya to rule the country again and both of them asked for forgiveness from his order. Where Sandara destroyed, which means that he and made a vow that he now was not a hermit. And then all of them returned to the kingdom of CP. Having arrived at the kingdom of Sipi, where Sandara asked the people to free animals in the cage. At night, the people like to come for the gift from Vesandara. Because of the power of Vesandara, there was the rents fall of juries. So now the people who would like to have the jewelry or the precious thing, they could take as many as they want. Um, this is the summary of chapter 13, Nakhon Gan or Return to the Town. So the moral from this chapter is that when we do something good for sure, we will have something good in return. If we use Dhamma or if we use the right principle to rule the country, it will bring about peace and happiness to the people. So now I would like to summarize the story with the identification of the people 
in the Buddha's love. In Vesandra Chataka, there were many characters. For example, King Ves uh, Sanjaya, Queen Pusti, Prince Charlie, Princess Gangha, Vesantara Mati, Jetaputta, the elephant. The Buddha concluded his sermon by identifying the people in his lifetime. Devatata is identified with Chujika. Devatata was the Buddha cousin who was uh, ordained as monk as well, and he was a rival to the Buddha for many lifetime, even when, the, when he was born as Siddhartha. So Devatata was um, his rival. And then Jinjamanaviga, who accused the Buddha that she was pregnant because of the Buddha. So Jinjamanaviga is identified with Amitada, Chujika, young wife. Channa, Prince Siddhartha, person attendant when he was a prince, is identified with Jeta Buddha. The hunter who was appointed by King of uh, Jetara to be like a security guard. And then Venerasari Buddha, who was that Buddha, first chief disciple, is identified with Ajuta Hermit. King Sanjaya, Prince Vesandra father, is identified with. And then Queen Pusati is identified with Queen Mahamaya, the Buddha father. Prince, sorry, Princess Mati is identified with Yasodhara, Rahula Amada, or Prince Siddhartha, royal wife. Charlie is identified with Rahula, the only son of Prince Siddhartha. And then Princess Kanha is identified with Upalawanna, the Bhikkhuni, who was the second chief disciple, female disciple of the Buddha. So on behalf of the monks, I would like to say thank you to all of the audience who spent time listening to this Vesandra sermon. At the, at the end of my talk, I would like to make a wish for your happiness, for your well-being, for your success, for your prosperity. Now I'm going to give blessing in Pali language. Kichitang patitang tumahang kipame wasamichatu sape borendo sankapa janpo panaraso yatha manicho de raso yatha sapi diyo wachandu sapa roko vinasatuma de poat vantara yo so ki tika yuko pawa apiwa tanasili sa nijang wutha pajayino Jataro Tama Watanti Ayu Wano Sukang Palang.